alone, we will use to bring all over the country to spread awareness for colorectal cancer. Anyway, I'm here to talk to you about three recent uh, innovations we've done in, in, in our colorectal cancer program in Medical City. Uh, the first one is robotic surgery. The second one is uh, HIPEC, as we call it, hyperthermic interperitoneal chemotherapy. And the third one is our enhanced recovery after surgery program. Let me start off with the robotics. No? Um, the world of surgery is becoming more, uh, more and more, well, less and less invasive. Uh, instead of the big surgeries we do, did in the past, we now, we now can do for early tumors small little incisions so you don't have big holes. But sometimes these operations are not easy because it's like operating with a chopstick. The surgeon is like holding a chopstick. And the innovation now is instead of like holding a chopstick, we have the robot that moves better than the human hand in a very tight space. And this is the growth of the robotic uh, procedures and the data they have over the years worldwide. And the advantage is, of course, instead of having the big wounds we used to do before, we now have little small wounds, and either laparoscopy or the robot allows us to do that. However, the robot has three division. The surgeon completely controls it. It's not the robot that moves on its own. I, we control it. It's very stable. Uh, it zooms in. If my hand can only move this way, the robot's arms can move around. So it's, it's, very, it's got a lot of dexterity. Okay? And it's very safe. The moment we remove our eyes and our head from the robot, the robot will stop. It will not move without the surgeon moving. This is the robot attached to the patient. The surgeon is actually a few meters uh, on the side with his hands on the uh, with his hands on the, ro on the robotic arms and moving the robot. So this is how it looks. The robot is on the patient. The surgeon is actually on the side controlling the robot. The advantage is more precision in, in, in smaller movements. Its articulation is beyond what the human hand can do in many ways. Certainly not with a laparoscopic instrument. It's 3D, it's easier for the surgeon. Kung medyo matanda na yung kamay ng surgeon at nanginginig na, hindi, hindi yan na uh, ano sa robot. Hindi rin nanginginig yung robot, it, it's stable, no? And, and that's why the robot is very effective is because there are some areas of the body that are very tight. Ang hirap operahan. And um, for instance, in the prostate, that's the most common indication for robotic surgery, the prostate. Kailangan mo itugtong yung daanan ng ihe, yung urethra. And you cannot stitch that with the laparoscope. It's so hard with the robot that makes it easy. Okay. Um, there is some evidence for colon surgery, precise removal of cancer tissue, low blood loss, low rate of complications, faster return to, uh, to recovery, short hospital stay. But for us in colorectal surgery, the, 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 we find the robot most useful for rectal cancer. And I'll just show you this slide showing the survival in the Philippines in 2005. It doesn't change much. Uh, colon cancer, the survival is around 47%. Uh, however, it's rectum, which is five years survival, it's only just below 20%. So there is worse survival with rectal cancer. And the problem with that is because the rectum is inside the pelvis. It's a very tight space. It's harder to operate. And this guy, Dr. Bill Hill, we invited him over to, to lecture to us surgeons before. He's one of the main leaders in rectal cancer surgery who showed that you can improve the survival of rectal cancer with better surgery. So here he is saying, in no other countries have such variations in outcomes in rectal cancer been observed. Um, there is no area of cancer treatment where the development of a better surgical technique has much to offer the patient. At dapat magandang maganda yung pagkatanggal. Importante, importante. Kung wak-wak ang tinatanggal namin, hindi maganda sa outcomes ng cancer. So it has to be very precise. And the problem when we do this laparoscopically, although maliit ang suga, is the instruments don't bend. They're very straight instruments. And yet we have to work
they're the instruments of apartheid uh, getting into. So look at the straight instruments, they don't bend in, and, in the, and yet that area is very tight and narrow. So I'm just going to show you a little video. Of the one on the left is laparoscopy, you know? If you notice, okay, I can do it, it's easy, I've been doing it for us, but look at how unstable it is. The robot is on the right, and we're doing the same thing, but if you notice, the robot is not moving, the camera is not moving. Here in the paroscopy, my cameraman is the one holding it, and if he's uh, tired already, it's not as stable, uh, I, somebody else has to assist for me, while in the robot, the robot is also you doing the assistance. So if you look at the movement, it's a little more stable. That's the advantage I find with the robot. Okay. Um, we also have a training program already downstairs because we're the first one who got the robot in the country. We also have another robot. We just want a new one. So the old one we're using for training. And, and so this is what the robot can do. Look at how it can tie, it can stitch. So we, we train our surgeons now on robotics. Okay, so that's our robotic program. And that's what we can do for colorectal surgery now. Uh, the most important objective of rectal cancer surgery is a good, good specimen. Minimally invasive procedure uh, is better than open because it's faster recovery. With robotic surgery makes minimally invasive surgery easier for the surgeon and the patient. Uh, but of course, training is required. Now, Okay, um, 